I'm scared to death of snakes, folks. I'm not afraid to admit it. I go into a complete frickin' panic every time I see one. I just got some chickens, so that's probably gonna mean some rodents to deal with. So it's finally time that we take these here, spear shot capsules for 38 and 357, and work up a shot shell load for my Ruger GP100 revolver. So I can have it around to deal with these problems when they come up. I just about stepped on a freaking copperhead the other day when I was picking blackberries. That's what finally made me decide that it was time to do this. I bought these back about a year and a half ago. Th these seem to be like a limited run product. Even before all of the shortages, you know, we're dealing with right now, you had to keep your eye out. These, these only seem to come on the market every couple years. Like if I go back to whenever I first got my revolver, this was one of the thoughts was to try them, but they just, they weren't available at that time. So when I I did see him went ahead and picked up 100. Now, if the reloading components aren't available, there's CCI branded factory ammo that they've got for quite a few cartridges, including 38 Special and 44 Special, and even 9mm and 40 and 45 ACP, and even 22. So that's out there. I, I don't know if we just get the, the overruns or something. I don't, I don't know why. The factory ammo is always available, but the components for reloaders just seem to be an intermittently available product. Maybe they just don't sell enough of them to fool with it too much. Now, when I picked up the RCBS Rebel kit recently, it came with the latest spear manual, this guy right here. And chapter 15 is all about reloading these shot shell capsules. There's some really, really good info. It's only three pages of info, but a lot of good stuff in here. There's even a chart that will help you pick out your shot size and tell you the pellet count and that sort of stuff. What we're gonna be using today is some number eight that I had on hand and also some number 12 that a kind viewer sent me. Tell you what, let's look at those real quick. So the difference between this tiny little number 12 shot and this number eight was much bigger than I expected. I think of number eight shot as being tiny little stuff, but this 12 is on a whole other level. So today we're gonna to do some patterning to try and get the best patterns we can with both size shot. And then I wanna do some basic tests to just get an idea of how much energy difference there is downrange between these two. Nothing crazy, like let's shoot at some eggs and see how far away they can break an egg. That's probably a pretty good analog. Like if it'll break an egg, it could probably kill a mouse. Now my thoughts going into this before we really start is, you know, I'm probably gonna go with number eight. I want a little bit more energy for dealing with a snake. I'm afraid the 12 might run out of gas and have an extremely uh, short effective range on something larger like a snake. You know, it'd probably be much better if I knew I was just going after mice and rats or something. So it should make for a fun test. So you can see I went ahead and filled up 15 with each size. These are a pain in the butt to fill up. It is a little bit tedious and it takes some time. So a bullet box worked just about right for this. And so just come down and take a big scoop, try and get it as full as I can. Then usually, you know, tap it to settle everything. And then I would manually sprinkle a little bit more on top to fill it up the rest of the way. That looks about right. Then we take one of these and slap it down in there. This might be a little bit too full, which is actually good. So it's not gonna go all the way on there, obviously, but what I do is get to this point and then just start turning it, like twisting the whole thing. And sometimes, like if that's not getting me anything, I'll spin it a little bit, tap it some more, spin it a little bit, and doesn't look like that one's wanting to move anymore. So then you pull this back off, and I want to remove a single BB. Eh, luckily there was one stuck in the cap. So let me get rid of this guy and let's try again. All right, now I think I've pretty much got it, but it's packed in so tight, you know, I can shake it and nothing moves. And actually if I turn it from this spot where it's, where it's, where I want it, if I turn it just a little bit, it's immediately going to open back up. So it's like got them all lined up just right to be all the way closed in that one spot. Now that level of absurdity is probably not needed, but I was watching a YouTube video, didn't really have anything better to do for 10 or 15 minutes. So I went ahead and did this to all of them. Now, if you'll recall, our load data sheet said that a full capsule will be about 109 grains. So with this number 12 shot packed in there nice and tight, these are a little bit heavy, around 115. So 114.5, 115.4, 115.6, 112.4. This one's just kind of weirdly light. It, it is shaking just a little bit. I might be able, let's see if we can get one more into this. Just a single little BB. Does it matter? No, but never hurts to be a little bit obsessive during your testing. Yeah, that barely brought us up any, right? 
it did get a little, get rid of the little bit of rattle that I heard and felt. So yeah, 114.2, next one, 115. So you get the idea. That's about where we're at as far as weight with the number 12 shot. And this is the number eight shot, or a little bit light. So 105, 102.6, 101.6, 101.6. So I think what happened, let me see if it is 102.7. So that one, the first one we weighed that was a little bit heavy, yeah, 105.2. I think this is where that's coming from and probably the same deal on the other one that was just a little bit light. You see how this one lined up and there's almost like a perfect lattice work of shot in there. And you can see just a little tiny gap there. So this one, yeah, I just, so I could probably stand to remove one or two, but whatever, I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's fine, like it's holding together and hopefully it'll be good. Now one thing about the cap, you see how it's cupped, you know, it's concave shaped there. That is what's going to expand and seal the gases and, and work as a wad. So pl plastic hits the rifling and it breaks open. And then this is behind it kind of soft and apparently it molds to the bore. But I want to shoot Unique and HP38. So we show 5.5 grains for Unique and 4.5 grains for HP38. So that's easy enough. But in the manual, they give us a little bit more information about what we can do to possibly improve the load for our specific situation. Now this paragraph is the one I found most interesting. It says, note that charge weights for shot capsules are relatively light. We limited muzzle velocity to maintain reasonable patterns. When fired from a rifled gun barrel, the shot charge spins and the pattern diameter increases rapidly. The loads we show gave decent patterns in our test firearms. Increasing the velocity will only make the pattern expand faster reducing its effectiveness. On the other hand, slight charge reductions may improve patterning in your revolver. And it goes on to, you know, give a warning that even with careful loading, handgun shot shells are short range tools when fired from a rifled barrel. Depending on the shot size and the velocity, pattern density thins beyond 15 to 20 feet to the point of being ineffective. Although pattern size will vary with individual firearms, and loading practices, we can give you a rough rule of thumb for figuring pattern size. Assume one inch spread for each foot of distance. If you are shooting at 10 feet, expect a pattern about 10 inches in diameter. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're hand loading, right? We don't get any of that good info here. Look at all that blank area. They could have printed those two paragraphs right there. So to start this off, I have weighed out eight charges. The first four are for number eight shot. The second are for number 12 shot. So it's gonna be exactly the same charge weights and all of that for the two different sizes of shot. So five and a half grains of unique, which is what they recommended. And then I wanna go down to five grains. With HP 38, I wanna do 4.5 and four. So we'll do that with number eight shot and we'll do that with number 12 shot. And then we'll review the patterns and move on from there. So I pulled out some of my Starline brass, went ahead and uh, resized it and primed it with CCI 500 primers, but I have not expanded them yet. So expanding and seeding is gonna be the tricky part here. So let's jump straight to that. I suspect there's gonna be a lot of switching back and forth between our expanding die and our seeding die. So went ahead and grabbed the Lyman All-American 8 so it would be easy to switch and our expanding die, I've got it installed right now, just basic by the instructions starting point. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Okay, so it looks like the little cap goes in nice and easy. But we're definitely not to the point where the plastic is wanting to comfortably drop down in there. All right, definitely need some more. Oh, so this, I'd made adjustment and went to set it there and it did go ahead and slip all the way in. You see, I'm kind of seating it with my fingers, but now I'm kind of worried about getting it out of there. I'm afraid the little cap is gonna get pulled off and I'm gonna dump powder or I'm gonna dump a shot everywhere. Nope, we're fine. All right, so that was clearly good enough. Let me try the next one and we'll grab a different capsule, make sure they're pretty close. All right, that and then a little bit of wiggle. Mm. That one doesn't quite wanna, there it went, right there. Okay, 
So it's just a matter of getting it lined up right. I might be a little bit over doing it right now, but I think that's okay. I think the Leaf Factory poopy. Well, there we are. The good news is that our die is set and I'm never gonna have to do that again. Bad news is now I've got shot all over the place. Just had a feeling that was gonna happen. So there's our little cap stuck down in there. So I might be able to save this powder charge, I think, cause you know, the little plastic caps just down in there, maybe I can work it out with some tweezers. I think at this point I've just managed to push it down in there farther. I think what I need is a little stick pin to like eh, stick it in there and then lever it out of there perhaps. Let me go get one of those. All right. I give this a very small chance of working. Not really sure what else to do, man. Let's see if I can push the pin through it a little bit, and then maybe nope, that didn't get any grip on it. Yeah, I think I just pushed it down in there farther. So I have finally managed to work it up and out of there just with a regular flat blade screwdriver, kind of working it up slowly. Tell you what, I'm gonna grab it with a big old pair of needle nose. All right, there we go. Doesn't look like I lost any powder. Okay, good. We're fine. So that one's ready. <laughs> I don't think I've boogered it up here with the, with the screwdriver. Let's see if the next one will go down in there. If I can get it to go down in there, I'll just leave it in there. Yeah, they seem to be, it's all about getting that perfect angle where they start to, uh, to slip down. Now, I just seated it that deeply with very little force. Let's see if, yeah, see that's already Right about our target of 1.500, so just a little bit farther. I'll probably seat it the rest of the way by hand. So I picked up some of these others to see what they were like, and you know, I just flipped it around so I didn't get another one of these stuck in here. At least this end, like these already go down in there very tightly and nicely. I'm not sure if these things taper at all. Let's measure one real quick. So maybe just a smidge. So it's 349 right out there by the end. And let's see, eh, 349 right around the middle. Yeah, it looks like it may be the same way up there. Let's see if we can just skip expanding all together. Thinking we probably can. I think earlier I just didn't spend enough time getting it lined up just right to where it wanted to go down in there on its own. <sighs> I just did it again. Soon as I like just lifted up a little bit, that cap fell out and I just drained the whole freaking thing. Oh man. All right, so I got that one dug out and I think I want to back off my expander a little bit. It's kind of halfway between where I initially had it and then where we had it a minute ago. Let's see if this still just kind of seems to fall in there a little bit easier than seems necessary. Yeah, went right in and then down to there. Maybe I'll back it out a little bit more. We'll just keep backing it out until I run into problems, I guess. That one seemed to feel a little bit better. Like it feels a little bit tighter. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other four. And these are the ones that get the number 12 shot. So I think I've got one and it's this one right here where I was pushing it in with my fingers, but it had a little bit of a plastic burr on it there for a second. I was kind of wiggling it just a smidge. And I'm afraid that the cap separated from the rest of it, but I I'm just gonna go with it. Let's see if it'll seat, see if it'll work. And speaking of seating, 1.5 inches, and this first one's just over 1.6 right now. So I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and run it up in there, back the seating stem way out, and then bring it down. Yeah, I can already feel it touching. Yep, didn't move much, but it touched. So this part, I just want to be easy. You know, don't want to crack the, the plastic. And it doesn't seem to be much force at all required, obviously. I mean, I pushed it most of the way with my finger. All right, a little bit over, a little bit more than one more turn. 
should be in the ballpark. This might be where it gets a little bit more interesting. Seems okay. And I've got our overall length down to 1.506. So let's just go a little bit more for six more thousandths and see what that does. Didn't really move things. Let's go a little bit more. I don't, it, it seems to be resisting me here on these last few adjustments. Like I, I crank on it and not much is happening. And I think maybe our wad has reached the level of our powder. So right now it's just kind of springing up and down on top of the powder. Yeah, I finally got it down 1.499. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and back that out just a little bit and we'll see how the next one acts. Here it is. So just nice and easy, very light pressure. Didn't feel anything weird. And number looks good, 1.495. Glad I backed that out just a smidge. And do these next two. That one slid in nice and easy. But that one went all the way down to 1.471. Yeah, this is a bit of a mess, man. Like these plastic bullets just aren't really, you know, there's no tight fit. So I think they're just all over the place. I, I can't wait to see what happens with the, the factory crimp die and see whether that sizing ring maybe chills these guys out a little bit. Yeah, 1.473, I bet if I, well, the problem is I can't really, like I don't wanna yank on it cause I think all I'm gonna do is just yank the blue part off of the white part that's in there, right? So th these are just a smidgen short, 30,000 short. 1.473 and then that previous one, I think it was, it was the same way. Oh, I know what happened. I know what happened. I don't know why I didn't notice it or why I didn't register. So Unique, the first two loads were with Alliant Unique, and that's a bulky powder that fills up probably twice as much space as that HP 38 load, because it's a, it's a lower charge weight, plus it's a much finer powder. So that's exactly what it is. We're basically down and compressed onto the powder, and that's why you know I've got a little bit of wonky numbers on my overall length. I'm kind of okay with that though, maybe. Yeah, we're just gonna roll with it. I mean, that just means we don't have excess empty case sitting there and you know 30,000 short that's not going to hurt us so the leaf factory crimp die i've got it set right now you know by the factory instructions just screw it down until it touches and then you're supposed to run a case up into it and then you crank on it for the for the crimp but i'm i'm more interested right now in this first part where there's that carbide sizing ring right in the bottom so as this gets to the die yep it went right by it didn't do a darn thing Okay, well, all right. So let's go ahead and screw this down until we feel it touch. That's the, the crimp ring touching the case mouth, right? And I'm gonna go like a quarter of a turn. Like I think the, the Lee instructions tell you, I think you start at a half turn and then adjust from there. We're not gonna go that far. Here's a quarter turn with this. Let's see if that did anything. Right, we'll go just a little bit more. Like that, that didn't seem to be, like I don't think we're close to danger. I'm gonna go that additional quarter turn. So now we're at a half turn. So let's see if that did anything. I guess we could keep going until we break one. Maybe just a, just a 16th of a turn more. See what that, that does. Yeah, definitely a little bit of curl to that case mouth. Yeah, and it's actually hard to, to, to see right now because this case mouth is a little bit shinier and stuff just from the remnants of all of the previous crimps from previous firings. So yeah, we didn't we didn't break it. Another thing I tried, like I can't twist it. I bet if I grab one of these, I could yeah, I can twist that easily. So okay, that at least tells me we stabilized we stabilized the bullet a little bit here with the crimp. Me We're gonna go ahead and run through them all. We'll see what happens. So this is the first of the 12s with the unique load and overall length came out exactly the same. One, just a little bit over 1.5. So 1.505 and same exact die setting if I grab one of the ones with HP 38 with the smaller charge weight. So go ahead and seat it and then crimp it. 
and it'll, it'll be right at 1.470 is my guess. 1.471. Okay, so that was a little bit weird, but at this point, I think we're ready to rock. Let's go see what these eight patterns look like. So this is our test setup. I've got a hastily assembled frame that I built out of tomato steaks. I'm hoping this paper is gonna be thick enough to get, show us a pattern, but it's almost like tissue paper. We'll see. I think what'll give us problems is if big chunks of plastic make it this far and just rip big holes in it. Gun looks fine, brass looks fine, everything looks fine. Can we see it there, kind of? So it looks like the pattern's a little bit left and that's totally okay, this, this gun has adjustable sights, so not concerned about that at all. But that's definitely quite a bit more than 10 inches. All right, I'm gonna mark this, put up a new one, let's buzz through them and then we'll get in and out of the heat and have a closer look. This paper I used was awful, just absolutely awful. Couldn't see the bullet holes whatsoever. But I, I did go through and mark a couple of these to show you guys something. There was, there was uh, one particular issue that was really surprising. So this is the second shot we took. So the pattern's pretty big, you know, like here, here's my hand. So that's probably about a 16 inch pattern. You know, if we just kind of ignore a couple that went out on their own, you know, that the kind of main pattern it's probably, you know, pretty close to that 10 inch range we were after. So this was unique. Well, whenever I switched to HP 38, this is what the group looked like. So, you know, so not only is it, you know, better group, but I'm looking at it thinking there are a lot more holes here than there was with unique. Like what's going on? I grabbed the capsules out of the exact same box. Like they were put together exactly the same. And just to be sure, I actually went through and counted them. So I had about 60 holes in this uh, unique pattern and 81 holes with HP 38. So the faster powder clearly did a better job of breaking up the plastic capsule and, you know, dispersing all of the shot load. Now, if you remember with the number eight shot, we were a little bit under the capsule weight that Spear said we were going to be, right? Not, not much, but a little bit. So maybe with the lighter capsule weight, we would just, we would need to up this charge of unique until we were getting more complete breakage of the, of the capsule, I guess. Like that, that's the only way I, I can, it's the only explanation I can come up with. Now, I really didn't see a dramatic difference in pattern size. So with the number eight shot and HP 38, our, this was our 4.5 grain pattern. And then the one, and the one we've already seen was four grains. So this was, you know, I mean, that's a lot, that's a big charge weight jump from four and a half to four or with unique from five and a half to five. I'm talking about, you know, 10% charge weight changes. And I, and I chose such a big gap between charge weights because I was hoping the changes would look dramatic. So while the pattern is smaller with our lower charge weight, I'm thinking that the pattern with the, with the higher charge weight is still good enough. A little bit bigger, a little bit more dispersion, but I'm thinking this is going to have enough extra energy to really make a difference. So my choice for the, for the number eight shot, I think is going to be HP 38 and it'll be 4.5 grains. Now with the number 12 shot, there really wasn't that much difference between all of the different groups. They're all very big, but they all did a really nice job of concentrating most of the shot within, you know, that maybe six to eight inch primary area. So just, just not much to show you here. Big patterns, but still, you know, what I consider to be an acceptable amount of shot right there in the area we're most concerned with. So here's what I want to try now. I want to load up some more rounds with the 4.5 grain charge of HP 38. So I'll load some of the eights, I'll load some of the 12s, and then we'll go out and shoot some eggs and see if, you know, we can get some feel about how much downrange range energy we've got. I also want to mix up some duplex capsules with like half eight and half 12. And we'll shoot a pattern with those and see how they act. And maybe we'll shoot some eggs and stuff, whatever. So the wad, the wad and the capsule don't weigh much. Okay, about, so less than 10 grains. So we know that our shot is around 100 grain. So for this duplex, I'm gonna start with the number eight and I wanna weigh out uh, 50, 50 grains more or less. I think one more will do it. How about that, perfect. So let's see if I can pour these in there. I only spilled two of them, three of them. So that filled it up about that much. And then 
Just sprinkle some number 12 right on top of it. All right, let's, let's see if a lee scoop helps. Yeah, that's much better. All right, there we go. A few little taps, and let's see if we can get a cap on it. Nope, need to remove a few. All right, there is our duplex capsule. No idea how this is gonna work out, but I think it's worth a shot. So our capsules with the duplex load ended up being just about the perfect weight, 109 to 110 grains, somewhere right there in that ballpark. Now one thing I, oh crap. All right, I think I'm finally getting the hand of, of assembling these things, but let me finish this point I'm wanting to make here about the, the shot. So the number eight shot that I've got is Magnum shot. It's high antimony lead. There's another type called chilled shot. So the Magnum shot is actually a little bit lighter as I understand it, just the alloy is a, a little bit lighter. I'm not sure if it's significant in these quantities, but you know, it is what it is. Thought I'd bring it up. The number 12 shot that a kind viewer sent me, I'm not sure if this is Magnum shot or chilled shot. So that's what I'm dealing with. So th this one that I was just putting in, you can see the, the levels down. So the, the wad has clearly separated from the capsule. The lead has, has dumped out and I'm totally screwed. So I'm gonna try and like twist this and keep pushing it and see if I can get it to, to go down and maybe reconnect with the capsule. No, it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. So I'm gonna come over to the seating die and try and give it a little bit of extra help. So far I haven't uh, broken any of the capsules and just a little nudge with the press just like that has been able to get them back where they need to be. All right, that got it most of the way. So this is the, thir the third one this has happened to me with. And what I've been doing is uh, just marking the top of them with a Sharpie. So I want to pattern one or two of these and see if, you know, does this destroy the performance of the round or is it just an annoyance? All right, this next one, let me see if I can kind of show you what I'm doing. I've got our powder charge that I'm throwing with my powder measure. And here's my full capsule. Kind of tilt the cartridge over as much as I dare and then Put it in there like that. And then it's all about alignment. It's about finding that alignment and getting it to go in. Before you screw it up. Now, even just this little bit, like if I pull backwards at all, it's all dumping out. Like, you know, as soon as that plastic wad enters the case, it's little skirt gets a hold of it and it's not coming out easy. So, Usually I can just kind of tilt around with it a little bit. There it went. See how it just started pushing. And then I take my finger and go ahead and push it all the way down. So that wad is all the way down and sitting on the, on the powder charge. Now these are a little bit short, which is another thing I failed to mention earlier. You know, when talking about, you know, the fact that our unique patterns, patterns with the number eight shot were much bigger than HP 38. So not only faster burning powder, but also shorter overall length. I think our, you know, once we seed it and crimp it, we're, we're, we're coming out to about 1.470. So about 30 thousandths below, shorter than the 1.500 that Spear has on their load data. Just like that. It works pretty easy most of the time. That one was a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it looks like I got it there. Yep, it's fine. So we're gonna do this the smart way this time. I brought out some poster board. Let's start out with the duplex and we'll go from there. So this is not even close to being as good as I hoped it would be. We got more big holes through the paper than I saw with the previous loads. And I think the, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. I just know that it's not good at all. Maybe it's not quite as bad as I'm thinking. I'm just worried about kind of the extreme edge of the pattern. Like there, there's quite a few, quite a few pellets in this area. So everything over here and down here, are, you know, six or seven inches away from the, from the point of aim. So I want to go ahead and shoot a second duplex load at this same target. So it looks like that one may have been a little bit better, but just still not super impressive. So now I've got the cylinder completely full. And the first three shots are going to be the shots that I had problems with seeding, where the shot fell out of the capsule. Now, the reason I went ahead and put, filled up the cylinder and put the other three in there is I want to take them out after we shoot the first three and see if our shot capsules are moving around, right? Is our, I mean, these are, these are basically just held in with crimp right now. And I'm curious if it's going to be enough, you know, in the cylinder 
to keep from causing us problems. So three quick ones. I'm just going to shoot it at the same paper. Or, no, I'm not. All right, so I flipped the paper around so we've got some, some clean area to work on. All right, now this is more like what I'm talking about. Like that's a pretty darn good little pattern. So one of those shots was a 12 and two of them were eights. Definitely does look like our pattern is a little bit to the left, but it's not bad. And that's gonna be pretty darn close to that, uh, that 10 inch expectation that Spear set. You know, we got a few, a few out here in no man's land. And they're always 12s. Yeah, the 12s do seem to kind of lose some out in no man's land a little bit. But looks pretty good, especially for capsules that basically fell apart. So these are the three rounds that were in the cylinder. And I had a look, I don't see any cracked plastic pieces or you know bullets that are obviously moving or anything. So I think we might be good to go. Let's crack a few eggs. So this is our test setup. Firing line is at the front of my bench. I've got an egg at two feet, five feet, 10 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet, and 25 feet. I want to start with the number 12 shot and we'll see how far out it can make it. Now, hopefully I'll get them all in one shot, but just to make up for my crappy pistol shooting, we'll give it two shots. So like if one doesn't break, we'll go ahead and shoot again. If it can't get it in two tries, then we'll call it a failure. Okay, cylinder full of number 12s. Hopefully this two footer, I don't end up covered in egg. Shell went everywhere, but I think we're good. All right, here goes five feet. So that's another nice little hole in the dirt. Okay, 10 feet, same distance we patterned at. All right, 15 feet. All right, that was a little lame. So it definitely got the job done, but a lot less devastation. Okay, 20 feet. All right, last up, 25 feet. So we still put some pellets on, on target out here, but it seems like it's mostly out of gas. Totally expected, right? This is actually much better performance than I thought we might see. Okay, I've reset the range and we're ready to move on to the number eight shot. Okay, two feet. Five feet. 10 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet, and 25 feet. So these results are pretty darn cool. There's our two foot crater, there's our five foot crater, our 10 foot crater, and then 15. So this is the first place where it starts to show some signs of less effectiveness. You know, large parts of shell are still intact and that sort of stuff, but I'm still pretty impressed. And then there's 20 and then 25. So here at 25, I think, you know, I think we've definitely run out of, run out of gas, but still poked a couple holes and probably would have got the job done, done on something little like a mouse. So that's the performance we get with our two good loads, but I've got a few more eggs left and I'm gonna set them out and let's try these duplex loads. Like we know these are terrible, right? The pattern kind of sucked. Let's see if it shows up in this test. All right, here we go again. Two feet. Five feet. 10 feet. Yeah, I was shooting a little bit fast. That one didn't quite explode as well as the others. I'm gonna shoot one more at it. Yeah, I think I just missed. 15 feet. 20 feet. I shot right over top of that. That was on me. Gonna shoot again. A little bit better and 25 feet. That felt like a good shot. I've got two more of these. I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and shoot them. Yep, 
yeah, this pattern's just not going to get it done out there. Yeah, so it looks like that 25 footer did take at least one or two shots, but not quite as good as the others. And it had three attempts. Our poor poster board caught a little shrapnel and just noticed I think our lens did as well, didn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, that's not good at all. I guess it's just not going to come off. Whatever, I'll clean it later. Dried egg is some nasty stuff. All right, let's get in the house, get out of the heat. So I'm gonna hold off on loading any more of these until I hear back from you guys down in the comments. Do I have a sizing die problem? Like, you know, I'm, I'm using a Lee sizing die. I guess the other factor would be the brass. So I'm using Starline brass. So that sizing die with this thickness of brass just results in that loose fit that you saw where you can seat the bullet by hand. And the only thing that holds it together is the crimp. Is that your all's experience or do I have something going on? Am I missing something? Like if this is normal, I feel okay about it. Like I feel like the rounds should hold together, but I want, you know, I'm gonna start carrying these with me a lot, you know, so barrel down in a holster where these plastic capsules are dangling there all the time and getting jostled might be enough to pull these things apart. So if I end up with a holster full of number eight shot every once in a while, I need to go back to the drawing board and figure out something else. So I'm, I'm really happy about the results of today's video though, because I almost didn't make the video. I was just going to put these together. You know, you just, you know, you follow the little sheet that comes with it and you, you assemble them. There's, there's nothing to it. it. It's, it's rat shot for crying out loud. It's snake shot. There's a limited amount of time and energy I'm willing to put into this, but it made for a fun little reloading test. I mean, you know, if, if I just assembled them, I would have used unique. I would have loaded five and a half grains of unique and I never would have known that that combination just resulted in a shot that wasn't dispersing properly. So I feel like it, it was worth the time. And it was also worth the time and components just to better understand the capabilities of the round. Looking back, I wish I had velocity data, but I made the decision early on to not even attempt to set up a chronograph because I've never really chronographed shotgun loads before. I know the lab radar is capable and my Caldwell is capable, but I just didn't want to complicate this. It goes back, you know, it, it's, it's rat shot. As long as it can get the job done, that's what matters. So that's it, folks. Thanks for joining me. I would love to hear your experience if you've been through this before and tried out some different stuff, what worked for you. So that's it for this one. See you guys next time.